Welcome back. Excitement is in the air as we hit the peak of the holiday season and look ahead to the vaunted home stretch of the first in the nation primary. I will also point out that we're in range of the Seinfeldian holiday of Festivus. And to help us with the airing of grievances, we have the party chairs, Ray Beckley from the NHDP and Chris Ager from the NHGOP. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. We appreciate the time. Chris is not going to do uh, Elaine's dance. Okay, no, yeah, I, exactly. We'll a, keep the Seinfeld references at a minimum no, here. So I thought Ray was going to do that. <laughs> so both of you have to stay neutral on your own sides, but you can say anything you want about the other side. And I will start with you, Chairman Buckley. You've been a part of the primary here in New Hampshire since you were a kid. Does Nikki Haley have what it takes to catch up to Donald Trump before January 23rd? No. So why is that? Uh, there, ha there has to be a sense of excitement. You saw that with John McCain. Uh, there was something that was beyond politics when you saw him, uh, saw him just kind of capturing the imagination of the independent voter. And that's what Nikki Haley needs is the independent voters. And she's not really offering anything because she's really mimicking uh, Donald Trump on positions. There's no policy difference between the two of them. And you really needed to have that. You know, she'll come close, uh, but not enough to knock about. Chairman Egger, are you going to have a close race at the end here? Well, the only poll that matters is on the 23rd. Um, but right now, clearly, President Trump is, is in the lead. The polling, you know, I feel that when I'm out talking to people. Uh, but things can change, and it will tighten. Um, it traditionally does tighten, uh, but will it tighten enough to have somebody overtake him here? Um, that would be a huge news story if it did happen. So the likelihood is low, but, uh, but anything can happen with the voters. And Chairman Egger, there's a lot less activity on the Democratic side. Do you think either Dean Phillips or Marianne Williamson will be able to carve out a result here that makes some trouble for President Joe Biden? Well, with the right in, you know, it's, it's always problematic. And, and inspiring people to come and vote for you when you don't show up in the state is, is difficult. Um, I'm here today to actually endorse Vermin Supreme on the Democratic uh, uh, ballot uh, as, as the most interesting and entertaining person on the ballot uh, on the Democratic side. So I hope he does well here finally and uh, <laughs> takes a win uh, into, the, into February. But um, in all seriousness, it, it's... The, the enthusiasm on the Democratic side uh, outside of Vermin Supreme is relatively low with who's on the ballot. And uh, um, I'm kind of hoping that President Biden gets a, a run for his money um, on the ballot um, so that future uh, Democratic candidates will reconsider and, and come back and the DNC will come back to New Hampshire. Chairman Buckley, will there be any headline coming out of New Hampshire regarding the Democrats on the 23rd? You know, we're not sure. Uh, this is unprecedented in modern times, and so we'll see how they do. A lot of really great, talented folks are, uh, are involved, uh, and we'll see uh, if they're able to pull it through. And we still don't know how much uh, money Dean Phillips is going to be spending here. Uh, I know, I believe I saw his television ad about a dozen times in about 20 minutes on MUR the other night. Hmm. Uh, let's shift back to the Republican race. Chairman Egger, do you think former President Donald Trump is making this race closer than it needs to be by maintaining such a light campaign schedule? Well, we, we would love to see all the candidates here more often uh, to make their pitch to the voters. Uh, President Trump is well understood. People know who he is. And so the, the requirement for him to be here is, is maybe less than, than say, uh, any other candidate. Um, but when you play prevent defense, you, you allow other people to catch up. Uh, write the narrative and some of that I think is happening here locally so I think it will be closer perhaps than than he would like um, in between Iowa and, and our primary on the 23rd we believe he'll be here that entire week and so I think he's going to try to play a lot of catch up in that week all over the state he has been here about about five or six times uh, this year so he, he's not ignored the state but um, he, he does he does come in at a deficit on FaceTime in the state vis-a-vis -vis the other candidates. Yeah, I've heard some people say it's easier to understand him as almost like an incumbent president running again uh, with the way he's operating. But Chairman Buckley, is it a tactical mistake for him not to be here more, or do you like it when he's here more? Well, I, I love it when he's here. <laughs> uh, every time he's had an, an event at the arena, we do very well at the polls and days following. Uh, but I, I think there is... Um, you know, a silver lining to him not participating in the debates. Uh, it looks like uh, the Republican National Party is getting out of sanctioning debates, and I hope that the Democrats do that as well. I think that was a big mistake when we started uh, interfering in that. Uh, I think that one of the things that's hurt uh, the early states is the, the National Party's getting involved in having these ridiculous uh, 
you know, heights thresholds. that they ha thresholds yeah. that they have to to make where they have to raise all of this money from all these different states and all instead of here knocking on doors and going into people's living rooms i think that we can get back to that if we can push the the dnc and the rnc out of uh, the debate business what do you think about that chairman Nager? does the, do those th thresholds warp the early state process well i i'd like to see as many people as possible in early debates and the, the first vote has, has yet to be cast and so we're just having people now get absentee ballot capability in New Hampshire. And so early, they should be as open as possible so that you get a chance to flush out the field. So um, I am a, a big fan of having as many people participate as possible early. We treat every candidate uh, from the NHGOP as fairly as possible. The ones nobody's ever heard of, all the way up to, uh, to President Trump. We give them all the same package, all the same points of contact, and try to help them. And, and that brings value to the New Hampshire primary, so that it's, it's not the money um, or the media or outside forces picking the candidates, it's the people of New Hampshire. Let's circle back to this Biden right in effort. Uh, Chairman Ager, do you think he will pay a price come November uh, for having taken in the action he has regarding the New Hampshire primary? Well, we, we hope he will and will remind people. Uh, the reality is between now and November, the policies of the candidates are going to be the number one item. And, you know, we, we feel very confident that Republican policies are, help make people's lives better. That's what we want to focus on. And, you know, as far as the First Nation primary, uh, it, it, has, it has tarnished his image in the state somewhat. But again, at the end of the day, it's going to be the policies uh, that, the, that the candidates bring forward and how they impact individual people's lives. Well, I, I think that if uh, we look at the poll that came out this week that uh, gave him a 10-point lead over Trump in the general election lineup, I think that we're going to see something like that in November. Uh, and uh, uh, no matter what's happening on primary day, the Democratic Party is united, uh, according to that poll, 100% uh, united behind the president when it comes to the general election. And obviously, the right and effort that's going on doesn't involve you but you know the, clearly what's being demonstrated is, or the strategy is that showing loyalty is what's going to pay off in the long run we'll see how that works out yeah, I mean that's going to change what's going to change between now and 2025 2026 to convince that rules and bylaws committee to come back this way well, first off, the Rules and Bylaws Committee is going to change. Uh, there is a, a lot of people that uh, are sitting there that will not be on the Rules and Bylaws Committee in the next cycle. Uh, we'll have a new DNC chair. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, you're going to hear from the progressive community across the country. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, really what this was all about was uh, punishing us for Bernie Sanders winning uh, in uh, 16 and in 20 uh, because they, the establishment in D.C. don't want the progressives uh, involved in the nominating process. So I think we're going to have that uh, very healthy conversation uh, after the inauguration. Just want to touch on a couple more things here. This uh, Supreme Court ruling in Colorado that would take uh, Trump off the primary ballot there. Uh, Chairman Ager, was the judicial system the right venue for this? I don't think so. And there was a challenge to President Trump being on the ballot in New Hampshire. Um, we were successful. The New Hampshire GOP intervened on behalf not of President Trump personally, but on behalf of the Republican voters, to allow them the full choice of people to vote for, let the information be put out, let the people see what's happening, and let the voters decide, not the court. I think that's, that's the concept that we support. And innocent until proven guilty, um, the, the, the President, or President Trump has not been uh, found guilty of any of the, the things that the 14th Amendment uh, case in Colorado has brought up. And so when you punish someone and you punish the voters uh, because a judge or, or a Supreme Court decides on a four to three margin to keep somebody off the ballot, I don't think that's good for democracy. Let the people decide in the primaries and then let the people decide in the general election. And whoever wins, wins, and then we, we unite as a country together and move forward. Chairman Buckley, how about you? You know, we had Dean Phillips uh, talking to him uh, this last week, and he was saying maybe he agrees with the idea that Trump uh, is an insurrectionist, but he thinks that in the long run, bringing the judicial system into the political system like this could have a, a negative impact uh, over time. What do you think? Well, I, I think that you recall there was a challenge to Bernie Sanders appearing on the ballot because he's not being a registered Democrat or elected as a Democrat, and we very, uh, similar to what the GOP did here, uh, we very much uh, stood strongly in support of making sure that the voters had their choice uh, and that uh, Bernie be allowed to be on the New Hampshire primary ballot. And we continue to do this. I, I think when 
when all this is said and done, I mean, it was a group of Republicans that tried to keep him off the ballot in Colorado. Uh, but at the end of the day, Donald Trump's name is going to be on the ballot in the general election in Colorado. All right, we've got about 30 seconds each. I want to talk quickly about the governor's race. Chairman Ager, how are you guys going to hold on to that corner office? Well, we, we have two great candidates right now uh, who are running, who've, who've demonstrated their ability uh, to lead. And we're very happy with either one uh, going up against uh, our friendly Democrats uh, on the other side. Uh, I think what we're going to be uh, promoting is um, a legacy of Governor Sununu's policies and having a, a good state to live in and policies that, that help the people of New Hampshire and promote that. And we'll have a great debate going into November. I feel very confident we're, we have a very, very good chance of maintaining that corner and office. Chairman Buckley, you want to get off the schneid here. This is a pretty long losing streak you've had. Uh, well, it was uh, just with Chris Sununu. If you go back over the last 15 elections, we've done quite well. Uh, and uh, we're going to do quite well. Uh, look, at people in New Hampshire are pro-choice. Even 50% of the New Hampshire Republican primary voters are pro-choice. And uh, Kelly A. could not be more radical in her opposition to women's reproductive rights. So uh, I think we're going to have a great Democratic woman governor. All right. Well, we'll have you guys back again. Maybe we can do it in the spring and when... Uh sort out these local races a little bit more. Chairman and Chairman, thanks so much. Merry Christmas.